And good morning, everyone. I think it's still morning. I lost, uh, lost my mind a little bit with flight times yesterday. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I, I put this, this presentation together. If those of you that have seen me present before, um, presented at Tech Live last year and, and a couple of the regional events, and those of you that have seen me present probably have seen a, a brief demo of Celebri or something quite technical or, or maybe salesy. So for this, we decided to go a little bit more um, hopefully thought-provoking and just have a look at um, kind of what we see day-to-day -day within our roles within Celebri and the people that we talk to. Um, and so that's why we've gone with a, a slightly different title this time as to why model checking is no longer a luxury because, um, and the, as you can see there, the next slide is why have we, uh, we chosen this. We went down this route because we have a lot of conversations day to day with customers now where we talk quite a lot about clash detection and we get caught up in talking about clashing and, and the basic stuff, we call it basic, the, the stuff that we can do every day on, on our models. But it's now, we've got a, a lot more intelligent clients and, and things that are, are looking at maybe we can check against building regulations or something a bit more advanced to make sure that we wipe out issues earlier in the in the process uh, on a project rather than letting things get further down the line and, and you know cause issues uh, or, or higher costs a bit later on. So again those of you that have seen me present before you've probably seen this this slide um, so a couple of graphics in there basically this is a question we've been putting forward since 2015, 2016, when uh, when the, the BIM standard started to come out, and, and this um, this specification within the PAS um, 1192 document came out, and we were talking about is it enough to just do clash detection, as I've said just now, and, and can we look at more model checking and, and rounded processes um, on our models? And the the graphic at the, the bottom right there, with you know, are you too busy to improve? It's that that typical you know, taking a step back from what you're doing day to day and actually having more of a, a look at your processes and whether there's anywhere that we can improve it or you know, maybe it's a, something a bit daunting to, to, um, you know, to change what you're doing anyway. So we're trying to change the question now and, and rather than keep referring to clash detection, you know, what does more than clash detection actually look like and how do we define more um, how do we define you know, a, a clean model? How do we define, a, a, you know, again, clash-free model or, or good data um, within a model? And then again, I come back to this, this graphic um, with you know, having it, actually taking that step back and, and trying to talk. We're trying to talk with customers more about process um, and the ways that these things can be improved rather than just trying to sell a, a, a product, look at, you know, say, here's Celebri, this will, you know, solve what you want to do and actually uh, look at what's important to you and what's important to the projects that you're working on and the roles that you play um, because, you know, everyone's got different things that they're trying to achieve and, and the goals are different. So hopefully it will make a bit more sense as to, to where I'm going with this um, shortly. But uh, I want to just take a, a rewind to 2016. We've, we've been look, doing a bit of, of research um, into why uh, the perception that clash detection is, is all we need to do, where that's come from and, and why our sweet spot traditionally has been uh, contractors um, who are doing these more advanced checks with Celebri and why it's now looking to, to broaden out slightly. So this is, uh, this is a, a graphic that's got a diagram that's come from uh, PAS 1192 too. Um, and you can see here with the bit that we've been focusing in on um, and talking to customers about is this central area here, this kind of um, work in progress area, the four boxes there. And there's, you can see the, the, the blue boxes there in the work in progress area talking about non-verified design data. And I think we, we saw a, a shift in people saying, well, when we're at design stage, actually, yeah, it's, it's non-verified, it's, it's fine. We can just send a, a design in and you know, we don't need to do our own internal checks because that will be done further down the line. And as I say, that's where the, um, the sweet spot of, of contractors is, is typically come from for our customer base. <coughs> because then it comes into this shared area within the common data environment. And this is where some of the coordination checks and data validation are being carried out and then results are being fed back out to the, the subcontractors and design team to, to do that. So I think, again, from the research that we've done, and there's a couple of poll questions that I'll show you the answers to in a second as well, but I think that's where this, this perception of, you know, we do our own internal clash detection and, and no more than that needs to be done has, has come from. Um, and 
model checking was was going to become a big part of, of the BIM standard, um, certainly in the UK, and, and has kind of fallen off a little bit or, or become a bit ambiguous as to what needs to be done. Um, but I think that's kind of where, where we've seen that from. So then we look at this, this second diagram here and again, um, still from this kind of uh, standards document. Um, and, and what we're looking at here is, is BIM maturity levels. And we kind of go through from level zero all the way up to level three, this kind of utopia of where we'd like to be with, um, with being you know, BIM compliant and, and having these different levels of maturity. But level two is kind of where, where that standard was and where everyone was told they, they needed to be at. And I pick out a, a few key words here. Again, this is from our own internal conversations. And the things that are highlighted there from level one onwards are collaboration, interoperable data, and focusing on the models and not being 2D and having our own processes over this way and then not sharing it out with the rest of the design teams and, and the people on the project. And we really see, and, and the, the common theme tended to be that to have interoperable data, not only does it need to be correct and, and compliant with the project standards and specification, but it also needs to be verified in some way so that there's a, an audit trail to say that we've done these checks to make sure that our data is, is right and we can prove it when we push it up then through the rest of the, pro the, you know, the workflow um, to do that. So again, if, uh, if you saw me present last year, um, I got a bit addicted to doing live polls. Um, so, and, and funnily enough, there's a couple more in today as well, um, if we can make it work. So we asked a couple of questions uh, last year, and, and some of the, the results were fairly interesting. So this first one, this allows you to, to type um, what you want your answer to be. And then the general gist is the bigger and more central that the word is uh, on the diagram is, is the ones that have been typed the most and the most popular answers. So we put this one forward, what is quality assurance to you? So at Salibri we talk quite a lot about quality assurance and model checking, as I say, rather than some of the, the more basic stuff. And I have to say I was worried at first, because when this came up, and the two things here, number one is clash detection came up big and bold on the front, and I think it was just you know, someone got there first, and then coordination and some of these other great words and compliance and BIM and things came up, and, and they started to dominate the, the diagram then. Uh, the other thing was Steve keeps popping up. Um, you can see there, someone thinks Steve is quality assurance um, to them. So, and he did reappear in quite a few of the presentations as well. So I don't know if it was someone uh, following my, uh, my talks around the country as I was going. But I found that one quite interesting. And coordination seemed to dominate there. And, and coordination comes back to you know, this kind of collaboration word of being able to work with others on a project. And you know, everyone works together. The next question that we put forward was, do you have a quality assurance or data validation process in-house, you know, within your own practices and, and companies? And I found the results quite interesting because we asked just before that, um, I couldn't find the, uh, the, the graphic for it, but the, the question we asked before that one was, do you have a clash detection process in-house? And the results were the opposite of that. You know, it was the 80 plus percent was on the yes side, and then the no was this you know, no, we don't have one, but it's, it's fairly standard practice. And I think the reason, again, coming back to the topic of the, the talk is, you know, it's no longer a luxury is because people are taking that step now to go beyond clashing and look at this whole, you know, clean model and, and proper data that we've got uh, within our, our models. So, as I say, there's a, there's a couple that I've got in here. So I don't know if, if everyone's got mobile phones on them. Um, if you have, if you can grab them out. And if we're connected to the Wi-Fi, this should work. If it doesn't, I'll, uh, I'll accept defeat and move on. Uh, on the screen there, there's, um, you can go onto your web browser um, and go on to uh, polev.com and then it's forward slash harry0897 and it should flash up with this question. Um, so if you remember the diagram earlier on with the different BIM maturity stages, um, this is just a question that we found would be an interesting one to put forward uh, just as to which level uh, people see that they are at in terms of that BIM maturity. Level two so far. It's 
from level ones coming in. And the good thing is, this is kind of where we, we expect it to be. It's, and it's great to see that, you know, majority are at level two, and, and then we've got the, the level ones, if you, know, if you are at that kind of level one stage, if you like, and pushing yourself forward to, uh, to these new technologies and new ways of working, then that's kind of, um, you know, our purpose and, and where we're trying to get to. Um, so that's, uh, that's really great to see. And, and again, I'll share these results out um, after this, this presentation um, via Twitter and things. So um, all of the results will be public from here. The next one, there's a, a just uh, one last one. So is, is clash detection enough to achieve BIM Level 2 compliance? So this is on uh, you know, your own thoughts and, and where you think. Great to see a no come straight in. Give it a couple more seconds. But I think what this shows as well is, is and we hoped this would be the answer, because this has been the general consensus from our customer base as well, is that there is more that we can do. I think maybe it's, it can be a bit of a, a step to see how we get to this utopia of, and, and also defining what you want to take on as, as checking and, and I don't, you know, there's going to be a, a spread of, of disciplines across the room and, and different types of, of practice. Um, so it comes down to what you want to take on as a risk to your practice, but this is uh, kind of what we're seeing is that that more advanced and, and wholesome um, model checking is, is where we want to get to. So there's a, a couple more slides to, uh, to run through just before I finish off. So then we've basically now seen that the outcome from our research into this question of is it enough to only do clash detection, no is, is the, the general answer that we've seen. So we're changing the question now to be how can we validate, and validate is a, a key word um, that are, again are, that we see quite a lot, how do we validate our models and ensure complete quality? So that's the question that we're, we're starting to put forward a lot more now and, and coming away from just talking about clashing as I say and, and look at these more advanced things that we might be able to do. And then, as it says under there, just talk about model checking and QA as a standard way of working, not a luxury. So there's a why is this important. Um, I'm not going to read all of these out because um, uh, I think they're, they're fairly self-explanatory. But there's, uh, there's an interesting one there, which we've, we've right at the bottom, that um, uh, staying ahead of competition. It's one that comes up quite a lot. And, and we have project meetings and uh, internal reviews with our customers, and, and we talk about competition and, and oh these these guys are doing this and it becomes quite a, a heated debate and it's, it's a, a fun one to be part of and I think it's more and more we're seeing people are, are coming together within BIM and, and across the industry to, to work towards this this BIM and, and user groups and things like that and, and everyone's willing to share but there's still that competitive edge of you know we want to be the best uh, on our projects and, and so we're going we're gonna to do these things and adopt them. To finish off, um, there's a few use cases, uh, as I say, which I'm not going to run through today, um, but just what I picked out a few quotes from these. We've, done, we've just done a great one with, uh, with Bon Brian Digital um, on the, the UK Ministry of Justice um, quality assurance processes. Um, if you can get onto our website, it's a great one to have a read through and see. There's a video on that one as well. And again, just to finish, I put a few quotes in from those case studies um, into here, and, and I'm not going to read them out, but um, I thought some of these were, were great, and they really show the value that our customers see from having a, a wholesome QA process in-house and doing full model checking with Celebri uh, on their projects. And I'll open up the debate. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.